La, la, la. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ all of you. Uh, as you see, we have an, uh, an, an, a new schedule for our program. You know, we said before that we would take in the weekend, we would take uh, uh, calls from Christians. And uh, so I decided to switch that calls and do it in the quality of life because almost we are not using that account anymore. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, YouTube keep playing with us because of what I do. And you know what I do. So from time to time, they switch our donation or let us say super chat donation off. Uh, so that will give opportunity for those who like to support us to support us in the quality of life. Because there they have no excuse. We are not talking about Islam. We are not talking about any of this garbage. So they cannot make any excuse. So those who want to support us, still they can make their donation there. And in the same time, we're still doing here what we need to do and what we should do. And they uh, let the donation happen. Don't let the donation happen. It doesn't matter. We will do always what we do. We fight Islam before donation. We fight Islam after donation. We fight Islam with, with, with donation and without donation. Nothing, nothing, nothing will change. But this is how, you know, they think they can fight you. Um, but, you know, keep trying. Keep trying. So anyway, uh, uh, we will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And they are only, uh, uh, you know, nothing, nothing to do with the cult of Islam. So let us say we will take a break from this cult three days a week. And we will, you know, we will have many, many topics to speak about, including if you have a questions maybe about Christianity, I have, you know, I will be happy to answer. But it have to be something, uh, you know, not to debate. You know, we that that channel is not for debating. Here we debate. Uh, uh, this way we separate between, we filter between the good and the bad. So this channel will be for the bad. That channel will be for the good. All right. Uh, we don't want Muhammad to chase us wherever we go. And actually, for me, uh, I'm sick of this guy. But what I can do? I mean, nobody can spank him better than me. And, uh, you know, the video I just made a few hours ago, I received uh, a message from a Muslim. He says to me, I hate you. At the same time, I agree with you. Uh, you know, and actually, I wanted to show his message, but he said, please, don't put my message for public. This is private between me and you. And I respect that. But I told him, you know, I will talk about what you said to me, but I will not show what you said. Anyway, so he hate me, but he agree with me. I mean, have you ever heard of such a thing? He hate me, but he agree with me. Now, I understand he hate me. He did not say much, actually. That's what he said. He said he hate me. I just saw your Ross video. And actually, I have to agree with you. But you know what? Still, I hate you. So, uh, he could not deny the truth there. So, he hate that Christian prince is getting Muhammad busted. And that hurt. This guy, God knows how, I don't know how old is he. He's worshiping Muhammad five times a day, bending over, his ass is up, his head is down, thinking he is worshiping God. And then there's a guy, his name is a Christian Prince. He came, he made a video for five minutes, and he got all what he did for the last 20, 30 years of his life is gone. So he hate me. But he agree with me. I wonder how many of them they feel the same way you know you see the the thing is that many of us I don't know like when you were a student there's a teacher who is he's he makes things easy I, I don't know if you if you know what I'm saying like we have the same textbook all the teachers graduated from the same university, let us say, or they have the same degree. But there's one of them, he makes things easy for you to understand. And there's one of them, 
may make you hate the, the subject. Like, as an example, mathematics. There's a teacher, he make you love it. The way, because the way he presented the subject to you. And there's a teacher who make you hate it because the way he present the subject to you. One, he make it so boring. One, he make it exciting. One, he encourage you to enjoy it. And one, he make you, because maybe you hate the teacher, you hate the subject, maybe. Because he's boring, he's stupid, he's uh, arrogant, whatever. So teachers are very important for us because they can share if they have really good ex expertise and good knowledge and good uh, understanding and they, they have a very good presentation, they can present the city to us. As you see, like we have a city in front of us now. So I can take a picture of the city where people are throwing garbage, dumpsters, rats in the street, or I can take a picture like this. The smart teacher is who show you things in reality, but yet he present it in a good way. Real, realistic, not fake. In the same time, smart, intelligent presentation, which will make you observe, learn, and make decision, not get just get confused. Like, okay, you show us a picture of the city full of garbage and the same city have a beautiful street. So what, what, what you are trying to say? Is it garbage? It is beautiful. This is why there is some people that are very successful in something and they cannot be successful in something else. This is why there's a somebody who is successful even to be a father, but not everybody can be a good father because he don't have the qualification even to be a father or to be a mother. So qualification is very important, not, not only knowledge, because knowledge and you do not know how to present or reuse the knowledge or share it, that will make you, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, short in ability. And this is why when we share with Muslims, we have to learn how uh, have an impact. The impact, not by saying I hug you and we love you. Yeah, yes, we love the Muslims. That's true. But Christianity is not about hugging people, you know. The love in Christianity is not about giving kisses. Love in Christianity is about sharing the truth, and the truth will set you free. So you have to uh, learn about the truth first, and then you have to learn how to use it, and to be truthful about it. And you need to learn how and when you present it. You know, like uh, there is sometimes like uh, comedy stories. There's a guy, he want to tell a woman about what happened to her husband. He said, uh, by the way, do you know your cat? Okay. Yeah, I, my cat, what about it? Something wrong happened to no, so No, 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 no. Your cat, she ran away from the front door. Okay. And she jumped in the street. Okay. What happened to her? Not, nothing happened to the cat. The cat is okay. The cat is okay. Your husband, he ran after the cat and a car hit him. Now, suppose this guy, he make it easier for her. Because like he take it in supposedly step by step, You're the cat, the cat run in the street. So he's preparing the women to know that there is something bad. I mean, this is how silly a human being can be. Why you want to do that? What cat and your husband follow the cat and then the car hit the husband? So some, they, you know, they think by, uh, by going in a circle, uh, they are being nice, or let us say, this is the right way to do it. Like, you cannot say Muhammad is a fraud. Okay, so what I shall say? Say that Muhammad, you know, uh, he taught wrong. 
his teaching not right. Um, he is not a prophet of God. Okay, hold on. So if he isn't a prophet of God, he is what? He's a fraud. You know what I mean? So there's many people, they try to school you about what to say or what not to say. But the fact, the most effective way is to be natural, say things as it is, as you believe in it, and present without sugar coating. Because what is the purpose of my conversation about this topic? Is it to make Muhammad look good or to, to say the truth? You see, I'm not even trying to make Muhammad look bad. Muhammad is bad. Because if I am trying to make him look bad, and he is not, that means I am the bad person, not him. So why we cannot say things as it is and present things as it should be presented? You know, uh, when the Muslims lately, they made a video saying Christian Prince, he, uh, you know, they, they, they are saying like Christian Prince, he speak dirty. He said to a Muslim woman, suckle me. I was reading their hadith. And the purpose of this is to make a Christian Prince look ugly in front of the Christian. Look, Christian Prince, how a Christian he speak like this? I agree with you. How a Christian speak like that? <laughs> you see, because I'm speaking about filthy topic like your prophet, so the conversation go that low. If a Christian is speaking about Christianity, he would never go down that, that level. But because my topic is dirty, then the words is about a dirty topic. So they try to frame you, they try to make you look bad, and they think by doing that, they can win. And all of this backfire on them, because people later notice that they are editing the videos, cutting the, the, the audio, uh, making a story, it was not there, and this is what the conversation about. You know, the Christian Prince is not, I mean, we are talking in the internet here, and we are talking in a public uh, conversation where hundreds and thousands are watching. So what are you talking about? Why you, why you are lying saying, a Christian prince is asking Muslim women to take off her panty. How that can be? Everybody is laughing at you by your lies. So they take off words, they put it together, and they make they make a conversation which is not there, thinking that they can take me down by saying such a thing. But the fact that will not affect me because simply my videos are there, people they can go watch them, and they will laugh at the Muslims. And actually, this is exactly what happened. Even Muslims lately, you know, we have many Muslims, we, you know, uh, who call me to attack me, and then we played the video for them. Uh, the, uh, the last one apologized that Muhammad Hijab is a filthy person, you know. The, the, the one who called, he said, I apologize, this is not a Muslim thing. The fact it's a Muslim thing. In this time, everything is acceptable, everything, every trick in the book of the devil is acceptable. That's why I'm not really upset, I love. They thought they can fight you. So when you fight the truth, you know, fight, fight, fight for the sake of the truth, you have to be ready. You have to present as it is. You have to be truthful. You have to stop being politically correct. You have to be uh, a natural. Do, never sugarcoat. And you have to be ready for the response. The response, they will do anything to put you down. Anything you can imagine. They will attack you as a person. They will make lies about you. They will fabricate stories. And all of you, you know why. Hmm? So, uh, uh, what we do is very important. And maybe some people think it's not effective. The fact it's very, very extremely effective. Actually, if you see the comments, you know, uh, they were saying, you should debate Christian Prince because he is giving a lot of confidence to the Christians. Well, after that, what happened? Yes, Christian Prince is giving more confidence to the Christians about Islam, not about Christ, because you do not need me to be confident about Christ. He is God, he is the Lord, and he is, you know, he, he, he is alone, he is enough to give you all the confidence in the world. But when it's come to the topic of Islam, yes, because look at them, where are they? They are making all kinds of excuses not just to call me. I want to debate you. I want to fly to the end of the world. If you are a man, debate me there in the stage. Well, all, the, all of those are excuses. 
Suddenly, none of them he heard about something called Skype, and none of them he dared to call me. And that is giving the Christians a lot of confidence because they are wondering, okay, well, if you are a person who knows more than him and you can silence him, well, what about you talk to him? You know, when they said, when Mimi, Mimi Susu, he said, you want to debate me, people thought there is a debate. There's no debate. The coward, they were intimidated to the, to the point they will not let me talk. And there is no debate. Did you say that in this video? Did you say that in this video? Give me the ref give me a reference for Paul is a, is a messenger in the Quran. We have 30 seconds. <laughs> they are so scared. So scared to the point they prepare for this short videos to play, mute, hang up. And then they call me after to meet again, thinking that this is by doing that they can avoid debating me. But the debate is still waiting and people are laughing. People, they thought that Mimi Hijab would be brave to debate me, but they discovered that he is terrified. Otherwise, why, where is the debate? And actually, I'm not mentioning his name because he is qualified to debate me. This guy is an idiot. He has no idea what he's talking about. He is the most silly, stupid idiot ever who defends Islam. And because they knew how much stupid they are, they don't dare to debate me. So look what happened when you are straightforward in your topic and you are confident in your knowledge and you don't sugarcoat. You install horror in the heart of the devil. Actually, there's Muslims, they call me, if you know, if you saw there's a video in Speaker Corner, one of the Muslims, he say Christian Prince is a terrorist. I mean, imagine terrorists, they think Christian Prince is a terrorist. Can you imagine that I am terrifying the terrorist? <clears throat> terrorist. They call themselves Salafi, Wahhabi, and yet they are calling Christian Prince terrorists. This is how much they are scared. Right? So when you reach that point, that terrorists, they think you are a terrorist, uh, you, should, you should ask yourself why and how they became so scared. And where are they? You know, we open our sky for one hour, two hour, three hours, and we keep saying, who is a Muslim when I call me? Who is a Muslim when I call you? And then when we receive calls from Muslims, the Muslims, they say that Christian Prince is debating normal Muslims. First of all, I never heard of something called normal Muslims. What do you mean normal Muslim? How somebody, I mean, normal Muslim, what does that mean exactly? Do you have normal and abnormal? Actually, I believe that any average Muslim know way more than those who they open channels in YouTube uh, trying to defend Islam. What normal Muslim mean? This is, this is an insult to Muslims when you say that. Because you are saying that uh, we are debating Muslims who do not know what Islam is about. As if you do. No. And okay, as long as the normal Muslim is the one who is calling me, why you are the one who is abnormal, don't call. Right now as we speak, do we have any Muslim who think he is a sheikh who would like to call me? Do we have any Muslim who he think he is a sheikh he would like to call me right now? Just to give you an idea how terrified they are. Anyone he is so confident about his belief, he's a Muslim, he, he, he cared to call. Look how brave we are, look how they are acting. You know, we, we don't know who is going to call, we do not know what he is going to say, still we take him. We are welcome because for at the end of the day you will lose. Anyone? Any Muslim, he grow a beard, do you think he can call me and scare the hell of me? Or you want to debate me only if I go, uh, I am willing to travel to the end of the world if you dare to beat me. 
My friend, I will not travel to anywhere in the world. You and your God is not worth anything more for me. Why I want to travel anywhere? I am getting your prophet busted sitting in my chair. Uh, and by the way, there is one of you uh, send me a message saying uh, 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 will give donation for me uh, for buying the chair because, you know, I was looking for a chair. I want to say thank you for that person first. And I bought a chair. So thank you very much. You know, I mean, if the donation for you is something from your, uh, something from your, let us say, I don't want to take from your needs and give to, give it to me. I got that chair already. And this chair is really good. I mean, um, it feels good, not really good. Actually, it's both. It's uh, it's fine. Uh, and I got lucky, actually. This chair is not a cheap, but I got it for only $119. Uh, $119.99. <laughs> Yeah, so I got a chair now, and uh, it's, it sounds like it's very good, you know. Uh, if you want anyone to tell you what a chair I got, I can show you. The, the, I get from Office Depot. Um, you know, those Amazon thing, it doesn't work because you, you bring the chair, you try it, and you find it a piece of crap. You know. Well, uh, it was sold for uh, $299. But when I uh, now, actually now I'm looking, look like they changed the price. Uh, let me show you. Hold on. I get it for 119 only. Very good chair actually. Let me open. Oh, where is the one? Hmm. Okay, I think it looked like this is the same one maybe the same one let us see uh, uh, let us see i'm trying just to find out you know which one which one yeah actually it looked like the same as this one see here it says 239 99 and the price now is 119 this one you know let me open it it's really good very comfortable very wide and uh, the funny the expensive one is the one uncomfortable and this one is a cheap one is yeah, really is good you know it's comfortable all right, so uh, it's called uh, real space, space, tris well bonded leather. Yeah, let me check if this is the same one. I think it's the same one. Yeah, I think so. I guess for 119.99 exactly. Yeah. So anyway, the one who offered donation and uh, you know, I I'm, I'm really I appreciate uh, your care uh, for me to have a good chair. Uh, but as you see, I just got a chair already. So you can save your donation if you're, if if that money is taken away from something important for you. All right. Um, I'm all right. Actually, a chair, a chair. Look, uh, they are the last thing to worry about. You see, many people they they uh, they think the chair, like those gaming chairs, are the worst. Never buy those gaming chairs. And when I was there, there's a chairs for 400, etc. They are garbage. You know, you sit in them. You, you, <laughs> it's not a chair. It's like a, a piece of rock. Uh, this one, first of all, it's really wide. Uh, you, you don't feel like you are. In, you feel like you are sitting in a couch. I think those is made for people who they are big by size. I mean, like they are wide. You know, and the back is high. Uh, it's very comfortable. The only thing I don't like about it uh, that the head it's really little bit coming out. Let us say uh, to explain to you here this area here where where your head go here. Um, I wish it was pushed. It's too much. You know they 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 put a lot of stuff inside. So like if you feel it's pushing your head out of the chair, uh, but it's it's very good still. Uh, I think maybe by time that will be a little less harder, this area here, you know, 
Otherwise, the chair is very nice, very comfortable, very wide. The speed here, the, and it's it's really thick the cushion. All right. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, so if you want to buy a chair, this is a chair if you like it. Actually, I like it. I I tried all the chairs, all of them, no exception. And this is the only one, and it was the 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 price the price was at uh, nine two ninety nine, not two thirty nine. Here it says it was two thirty nine, and uh, the price now is one hundred nineteen sale. So I got one. All right. Yeah, actually, it's very comfortable. I like it. <clears throat> now we can we can play with uh, with Muhammad better. <laughs> and actually, this one, this chair, you can like you know you can push it back and it like it recline, but it doesn't recline and stay. So it's like a, like a like a little bit of a swing chair. You know, it doesn't recline uh, uh, and stay. No, this is a very simple chair. But I I, I like it this way. Uh, Harman Miller, you know my friend, I'm not a, a fan of those chairs. I searched for this one; it was very expensive. I will not, I will never pay uh, four hundred and five hundred or seven hundred or eight hundred dollars for a chair. That's crazy, right? I can buy a car for five hundred dollars, take the chairs off <laughs> from the car, and they are comfortable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you have to be smart. Don't let them use you and abuse you. Yeah, some people think if they spend too much money, they will get the best. That's not necessarily. You know, there's a wrong idea. People believe that if something expensive, that's mean it is. It is the best. No, as you see, this one I got just for 119. You know, compared to the other prices, this is nothing. But it is, was the only one. And you know, the distance from the back of the chair to the front is really good. Because, you know, I sit in the other chairs, I find half of my legs out. I mean, what's the point of this chair? I mean, they are so cheap, yet they are expensive chairs. You, you know what I mean? Like when you sit, the, uh, your, your legs is not, not all of them in the chair. Like all the way to your knee known. Like you find yourself half of your leg is outside. This one, all of it is inside. Yeah. <clears throat> and yet it is $119 only. So you get, uh, you get the price, you get the quality, and that is best. Look at this picture here. Let me show you this picture I just found. Hmm. Very interesting picture. I love ocean. I love the cloud with the ocean. It's amazing. The, the waves, the water. I mean, it's really the contrast of, of, of colors. Isn't it, isn't it God is amazing how, how, how this art is made? Look at this. I mean, look at this. Did they say to you, he will give you heaven and there is a, a grape tree and there's women have no panties. My friend, let me live here. Hmm? I don't want women around me. Let me just sit in the front of this ocean, enjoy this amazing beauty. I don't want your panties. I don't want your grape. I don't want your river of wine. I mean, river of wine, why I'm an elephant? God is amazing. And you see God who created us, who gave us those amazing eyes, uh, because until now I could not find the camera really can uh, can do what eyes can do because uh, cameras they are uh, under the let us say the influence of lighting and they are not sensitive for lighting the same as our eyes and they cannot find they can they cannot see the dimension uh, still like, like we are looking at this picture now and we are amazed with it but you know when you see it with your own real eyes naked eyes it's really so beautiful and add to that the sound, you know, God, he gave us our ears where we can hear the sound effect, which is so beautiful. Uh, so, you know, like when people think about God and think about heaven, like the Muslims, they are believers and Christians are believers, but we are not the same believers. Heaven of God have nothing to do 
our heaven of God have nothing to do with their heaven. For God, if you want to make you happy, my friend, it's not going to be, I mean, happiness way beyond material in gold and silver and sex. Because all of this is temporarily. How much, how much you can eat? If a Muslim, he says he can eat unlimited, that's really weird. I mean, so you are now, you have a stomach which is can take, uh, let us say, three, four pounds. And yet you can eat. And not only that, Muhammad, he told them that in the heaven, they will not do poopoo, which means the food go inside. Where, 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 the, where the food will go? And, and why you are eating food anyway? So the food go in. Okay, you, you ate meat, you ate fruit, uh, you drank water, you drink wine. Okay, and nothing will come out? No, according to Islam, nothing will come out. Uh, so always, you know, we, we find there is a huge difference between us and them. And this is why when somebody tried to confuse you and say we Christian, Christians and Muslims, they worship the same God, like you will find some idiot who claimed to be a Christian priest. They lie just to be perfectly correct, saying that we Christians and Muslims worship the same God, which is absolutely not only not a true, it is disgusting to say. They just say that just for the sake of being perfectly correct. And those people, they should not deserve our respect. Actually, if you if you go to a church, and the priest in that church, he says to you such a thing that Islam and Christians worship the same God, you better leave that church immediately. Immediately, this is not the Church of Christ. The Bible says it clearly. Who is the Antichrist? <laughs> is it? Who is the Antichrist? The Bible says, who is the Antichrist? The answer is, the one who denied the Father, the Son. Okay, <laughs> so do Muhammad deny the Father and the Son? Yes. Islam, all of it is based in de denying the Father. The Muslim, they deny that there's something called Father and Son. So the Bible says clearly that Islam cannot be, not only that, it says that it is Antichrist cult. So how in the world, someone he claimed to be a Christian priest, or minister, whatever the church name. I don't care if you call it Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Don't give me those names. We judge by individual teaching. Anyone he says such a thing, he is false, he is a fraud, and he is no Christian. For the Bible is absolutely clear about that. There's no confusion. Uh, Super Chat is not active. Anyway, however, if you like to support us in Super Chat, when we go live on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in Equality of Life, Super Chat there is active, you can do that. And actually, Super Chat is not a big deal. I mean, if you want to donate, you can donate in uh, Patreon, because YouTube, they take a lot of money from the donation. I think if you donate uh, $10, I think they take maybe 5 I don't know, they take 50 or 60%. <laughs> I mean, the it's a theft. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. How stupid to say two religious groups believe in the same God. You see, no, we can say there's two religious groups believe in the same God. It's possible. As an example, like Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians. We believe in the same God. However, uh, even the Jews, they don't believe in Jesus as their Savior, yet, right? Still, we believe in the same God. Uh, but uh, Christianity and Islam are too far apart. They have nothing to do with each other. Actually, Islam is an enemy to, to Christ. So when somebody, he says such a thing, he's obviously trying to deceive you. He is not a trustworthy, he's not a priest. He's a priest of the devil. I don't know if once I told you this story, somebody invited me to a church and uh, he said to me, uh, I think you should go. I think you will, you will like the topic. He did not tell me about the topic. I went there 
And there was a minister or a bishop, whatever you call him. He was talking about Islam. And he starts saying there's many, a lot of misunderstanding uh, about Islam. Uh, Muslims, they believe in Abraham and the God of Abraham. And uh, it's a blah, 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 blah. You know, and the guy next to me, I want to stand up. And, you know, the guy next to me, he keep holding my hands. Please sit down. Just sit down. Please just sit down. Sit down. I could not take it no more. So I put my hand up. He said, the guy, the, the bishop, he said, uh, uh, we, we, are, we are not taking questions yet. I said, I'm not asking you a question. I'm not asking you questions. You said first that Muhammad is from Ishmael and the Arab is from Ishmael. I want you to show us from the Bible where it says that. He said, sit down, please, sit down, sit down. We aren't taking questions. I said, I'm not asking you. I'm challenging you. You are lying. You said that the Muslims, they follow Abraham. Isn't it the Bible says that the one who deny the father and the son is an antichrist? Sit down, sit down. And then they, they drag me out of the church. Hmm? You believe it? And then what I did, I went home. I got an old printer. I printed a lot of reference, you know, until all the ink I have in, uh, I was trying to do it fast before the service is over. And then I took the, all the papers I have. I went in the front of the church. I found two kids. I told them I will give you $5, you know, now and $5 later. Anyone he go from the church, give him a paper. Each time somebody go after the church, those kids, they give him a paper and then I'm standing outside because you know they can call the police for you that's it they don't want you there you know so I'm not I'm not in the property of the church but I am in the front of it then people they start coming they see me they came and they start talking to me and they shake hands and they say we agree with you this guy is not is not saying the truth we will never go there again and uh, he said those kids they gave us those papers I said I am the one to print them I got him busted. Everybody, by the way, all those who inside the church, you know, they, uh, my friend, they told me the people, they start leaving after they, they took you out because they were upset. But look like, you know, uh, those Christians, they were sitting, they are shy to challenge this guy who is a bishop to say to him, shame on you. But nobody is brave to say to him, uh, you, what are you talking about? So we have to be careful, you know, we have to be careful. And those who claim to be Christian ministers, uh, we have to put them into test. We have to examine them. Not everyone he holds the Bible in his hand and he quotes for you a few verses. He is a Christian minister. No. <clears throat> Always when you go to a place, you know, last time I did a seminar in Texas. Uh, the the minister he stood in the in the in the stage. This guy he, he you know he did whip Islam with the floor. Uh, he don't care. He is zero politically correct. So I like his church actually, you know. And then uh, when I, after I uh, spoke, he said, uh, "Do you know why I invited you?" Like we went outside and we talked for a while. He said, "Do you know why I invited you?" I mean. There's many, they, they, they refer to me many names, but uh, you are very natural. You say things as it is. And as you see, you know, people, they were dying laughing because you are just truthful. You are just saying the truth and you are just natural. You don't, you don't fabricate. You don't make things up. Uh, you don't sugarcoat. You just say it. And this is what we need in our churches. 
we do not need people to sugarcoat crimes and criminals. If you cannot say to the criminal you are criminal, you don't deserve to be a Christian. You see, there's a story in the Bible about a person, his name, John the Baptist. What John the Baptist did? Anyone who remember what John the Baptist did? You know, some Christians, they say to you that there's verses in the Bible that says that kings are chosen by God. My friend, don't misquote. So we have to obey, obey them blindly. No, my friend, that's not true. Even kings, who they are kings, if they are doing wrong, the Bible says you fight against evil. And this is what John the Baptist, he did. He lost his head to stand for the truth. So those priests, they can be sometimes working for the devil like Muhammad. So when they want, they want you to be a slave of kings, to obey them blindly. And they quote for you verses fit perfectly with this topic, misquoting the teaching of the Bible. They say to you, Jesus says, give to Caesar what to Caesar. Jesus was saying, give the money which Caesar printed, give it to Caesar. He was not saying anything else. He was answering the hypocrite Jews who said to him, should we pay tax? He asked them, okay, what the money in your pocket? Well, the money in your pocket is for the Caesar. Gift what to Caesar, what to Caesar. If you don't want Caesar, why you carry his money? If you are against paying tax to Caesar, why you carry his money? So always there is many people who they claim to be Christians, who they are working and serving for the devil, same as Muhammad. And we have to be careful from those people. Can something about when you were young, but Jesus is first? The end, I'm not sure. The question is not coming accurate, so there's something missing in the sentence, my friend. <clears throat> yeah, actually, and actually those, those uh, priests who they do such a thing, they are more dangerous than Muhammad because you send your son or daughter to the church thinking that you are sending it to the house of God where you can trust the teaching there, and then you will be poison the head of your child. This is why before you send your children to the church, you have to examine the one who is going to teach them. All right. I mean, people, if they want to buy a chair, they read review about it. <laughs> we were talking about a chair, right? They try it. They sit on it. Okay, you want to send your son or daughter to a church. Shouldn't you see who is the priest there? What he teach? What his knowledge? How truthful he is? How decent he is? Maybe he's a child molester like Muhammad. Right? So shouldn't we examine a person who got such a job? We will trust with our family. You see, remember that we don't live in heaven. We live in earth, and the earth is full of devilish people, evil people. We live in earth where people kill each other, rape each other, steal, harm. You know, once we slept in a, gra a graveyard, we were like doing like hiking, and it was raining hard, etc. So uh, I saw a graveyard far away. I said, did us sleep there? You know, graveyard, you know, they have like rooms, empty rooms. They were, do you want to sleep in the graveyard? I said, the graveyard, this is the most peaceful, peaceful place ever. You see, you should be worried if you are sleeping between a human you do not know. But a graveyard is the most safe, secure place. They are dead. Human being can be very evil. So, when the Messiah, he says, be aware of false teachers, false prophets who come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. 
those can be in our churches and the Bible have many verses about those who they can call themselves brothers but they are deceivers <clears throat> how about Christians who want to evangelize Muslims but they want to emphasize the truth in the Quran like Mary my friend there is no need to mention the similarity because they knew it okay Mary is a virgin and you see do you think some there's first of all there's nothing called similarity if somebody steal information from my book that will make him not make him similar remember Islam came after Christianity so the poison is the plan of the poisoning that I will take some of their belief to make them confuse so they will not reject me totally I will accept the Messiah and then I will call him Isa and then I will say he is a messenger, but he is not God. And then I will say, I accept Mary, she is a virgin. And then I accept Moses, he's is a prophet. And then I accept Abraham, he's the father of the prophet. And then I accept Adam and Uvis, Edith's story. So, okay, he accepted many stories, but that is part of the plan. This is why Jesus said, be aware of false teacher. They come to you in a clothes of what? Of sheep. What sheep mean? Someone earn your trust. How he can earn your trust? You say, I believe in Jesus. I accept Mary, she was virgin. I believe in Moses, the God of Moses. That's how he can earn your the trust. You know, when a thief want to come to your house, and you are in the house, you don't leave the house, you are always there. But he want to get in. What he can do? He will come to you wearing a uniform of a cable guy. He will knock at your door. He will wear a uniform, he will have an ID of a cable guy, and he will say, sir, your cable is not working, or the company sent me to check it. Uh, open the door, please. You open the door because you trusted the uniform. So those who they think that they are adopting the similarity between us and the Muslims to make us closer to each other, that will never happen, because that is showing the ignorance of those who they are doing this. Why? Because the Quran says that Christians are the enemies of Islam and Allah he hate them so if you think you can, you know if you think you can get the close to the Muslims by doing such a stupid thing it's your lost not their lost because for them still you're an enemy so you compromise they will never do compromise <laughs> you know what I mean you compromise with the truth thinking that we can get the close they don't do you see it Allah will spread hatred between the Christians until the judgment day this is how much the Christians are bad for the God of Islam so how you can get it close to them not only that the Christians been the Muslims been ordered to kill every single Jew and Christians chapter 9 verse 29 until judgment day Either they pay money or they die. So what what are you talking about? You wanna you wanna say to them, okay, we have a similarity. We don't. All right. Well, those who they are, maybe they are good Christian. I'm not saying, but you know, the the one who is doing that, we need to correct them and show them that this is not true. You know. Secondly, you don't compromise with the truth. If those Christians are not willing to say to Muslim that Muhammad is a false prophet, then they are no Christians. They deny Christianity. Right? If you accept Muhammad to be a prophet, you deny Jesus. You cannot be with both. So when you are talking to them, what do you say? Are you willing to say that Muhammad is a false prophet or you will say he's wrong? Hey Christian Prince Channel, how are you my friend? Good to have you. Welcome. We welcome all our brothers and sisters in Christ from around the world. Indonesia, Malaysia, India, and you know, we welcome Hindus, Buddhas, everybody. We love everyone. Never compromise. Never compromise. 
because compromise will lead to a compromise and then you will find yourself out of the highway. All right? Mistakes in Arabic Quran. Well, we can make videos about mistakes in Arabic Quran, but who knows Arabic? You see, we make it in English, speaking English about English stuff. I mean, we are not talking about Arabic. And yet they say, no, CB, it doesn't say that, CB. So imagine in Arabic. Anyway, there's many, there's many. Let me show you an example. There's sheikhs, there's Muslim sheikhs. They got the Quran busted. You know that? Let me show you an example. They laugh at the Arabic Quran. Um, let me see. I'm trying to find one of the sheikhs. I forgot really his name. I'm sure the Muslims they hate him to death but he have a very huge audience from the Muslims you know he's a Muslim um, I forgot his name really I, uh, I don't remember his name. Um, I'm just trying to find... Ah, Tawhidi is not a sheikh. Tawhidi is a potato. This guy is a kid. This guy, he just broke the egg. He came from the egg yesterday and they made him a sheikh. And he's a hypocrite liar. Um, I cannot find him. See, if you don't want, if you if you look for something sometime, like that's it, I can't remember the name. That's it, the name is gone from my head. But I saw his video a while ago. Uh, That's why I don't remember his name, but I, I will find him. This guy, he, he ripped the Quran off, and the Muslim, they can't say he's, he don't know what he's talking about. He's a sheikh. He's a, he's a very well-known sheikh. Um... Hmm. Went and now I cannot find him. Somebody saying we Muslims love Jesus more than Christ. Uh, okay. Well, you know, if you love Jesus, so why you want to kill the Christians? <laughs> And if you love Jesus, my friend, how come you don't have his name? Who is Isa? The one you talk about have nothing to do with us. The one you are talking about, his uncle, his name is Musa. His mother, her name is Maryam. And he is the nephew of Aaron. Who is that? Who is that person you are talking about? And if you love uh, uh, what you call Isa, why your prophet he order you to kill the Christians? So you love you love Isa, but you want to kill his those who worship him. That how much love that is, you know, too much love. Uh, 
What sheikh was him, Yosef? He is not a sheikh. This guy is a sheikh too. You guys, you get me the wrong names. Those are kids. Sheikh was him, Yosef. <laughs> Those YouTube sheikhs. I will find him. You see, I'm just flipping YouTube. I don't have a name. I cannot remember the name. We will find him one day. Uh, how Muhammad cannot read, but he managed to copy many teaching from other religious without reading their books. Well, he did not. Well, okay, can you show me what he what he copy as like uh, to say he is uh, reading? You can copy by hearing. I mean, that's not a logic, my friend. So now, if I say to you a news, can't you copy the news and take it to it somebody else? Or you have it to get it in writing? That is not an argument. Secondly, I don't believe Muhammad did not know how to write, how to read. However, he knew how to write, how to read. That's not an issue. Because still, uh, at the end of the day, he hear it, he, he say it again. Um, look like I'm not going to find him today. I'm sure if I'm not looking for him, uh, we will find the Sheikh right away. But because I'm looking for him, it's it's not going to be easy to find somebody you do not remember his name. Imagine. Um, <clears throat> And then now nothing. All right, look, we will not find him for now. But I promise you, I will find him. Dr. Farouk, assalamu alaikum, my friend. You see, even assalamu alaikum, this is not a this is not an Islamic greeting. This is a Jewish greeting. When the angels came to Mary, what they say to her? Anyone remember in the Bible? When the angels came to Mary, what they said to her? Shalom to you, Mary. Salam alaikum. That's exactly. When the angel which Muhammad claimed came to him, did he say to him, Salam alaikum? No. How come? Ask any Muslim. How come Muhammad he did not receive Salam alaikum when he met the angel first time? And how come the angel, when he came to Mary, he said to her, Peace to you, shalom to you, Mary. Because this is not the same angel. There's, there's no angel in there, the story. This is a fabrication. An angel who came to me, he squeezed me three times, first time, second time, said to me, read why he do not know. The, you know it's a stupid story. Right? Nothing, nothing in the story makes sense. Anyway, guys, did you did you click at the link under the video to subscribe to the, the other account? Please don't forget to click at the link under the video here in the info, because as you see, we will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So from now on, uh, remember, you will not see me in this account in Friday and Saturday and Sunday. This is why you should subscribe if you care really to join us. Then you click at the link in the info, subscribe. So you can join us. And I know that, you know, uh, people are lazy even to click at the link and subscribe, but it's up to you. You want to join us? We will have a good time together. Enjoy, enjoy being a Christians, loving everybody, enjoying quality of life, quality of love, quality of the family, quality which God he gave us to enjoy.
Do we have any Muslim here? Any Muslim don't agree with us? Look like all the Muslims agree with us. That's wonderful. Good to know. No, not a quality time with me. Quality time with, with the Lord who gave us the quality of time, you know. You see, always when you are a believer, you have a certain kind of comfort inside your heart. If you go to Islamic countries, you will see how angry they are, unhappy. It doesn't matter, even the wealthy one. Because hate is a poison killed the one who hold it. You see, Christ, he free you from hate. It destroys hate inside you. That makes you relax. You know, hate is like a, somebody hold you from your nerve. And he's squeezing that nerve hard. And the pain, a lot of pain inside you. But nobody feel it except you. Oh, you, the, you know, okay, you hate me very much. Or no problem. But I, I feel nothing. You, you are the one who is suffering. And this is exactly what happened when you joined the cult of Islam. That's exactly what happened. Actually, one of the reasons that Islam is dead is the heat. Because heat, you know, the first the first harm it does, it kills its own carrier. It's like it's a virus in your back. And when you cannot release the anger you have inside you, you die. Your heat, your heat will kill you. Yeah, I could not find this. Uh, this is a, a scholar, this sheikh. Maybe some other time we would do so. <clears throat> He's from Iraq, actually. Um, When I find, you know, this is actually this guy, his videos is good for those who speak Arabic uh, because uh, he have a very strong knowledge for sure. And he is not, you see, he's a Muslim, which is very weird, but he's just being truthful. When he see a verse in the Quran, is it stupid? He says, stupid. He said, this is gonna, what this is, what is this is about? How God can talk like this? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's just being honest, you know. And you cannot, you cannot. I mean, uh, you, you as a Muslim, if you listen to him, you cannot say to him, "He's you're lying." I mean, I, I challenge one Muslim to say to him, "You're wrong." And I promise you, I will find his name, and I will post his link, and I will make a video about him actually. Maybe by tomorrow I will find his name. Because, you know, when you look for something, you cannot find it. Especially, I don't remember his name. You know, I, I watched his video a long time ago. He had, like, a lot of videos, actually. I watch only one. Because for me, there's no benefit. I'm not going to learn from him anything. So I did not really watch. I just saw one. It was interesting because he is a sheikh, dressing as a sheikh. He's a sheikh. And then yet he is being truthful, which is very really strange. You know? He read the verse for you and he says, what this is? What this is about? This is God. <laughs> this is God is talking. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what Tawhidi, my guy? Tawhidi is a kid. Tawhidi is not a sheikh. Tawhidi is a sheikh. Are you serious? This guy, he don't even know how to, to read his book. 
Akram al Kabi. I don't think that his name. No, I don't think so. Uh, Al Jabajai, Al Tabatai, something like this, his name. Uh, let, me, let me try this. Here we go. I found him. I found him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I now and no uh, I'm getting close to remember the name I'll... here we go uh, finally I found him Finally, I found the guy. Oh boy, took me forever to find him. Yeah, you see, because I don't remember, I don't remember his name. All right, this is him. His name is Ahmed Al Qabaiji. Sheikh Ahmed Al Qabaiji. Look, look, look. Even the title of the, the video: Four Problem Destroy the Quran. Four Problem. This is a video. This is a Sheikh of a video. Four problems will destroy the Quran. The video underneath. Uh, uh, two verses in the in the in the Quran, they are stupid. Sakhifa. Silly, silly, silly verses in the Quran. This one. This Quran cannot be from Allah. <laughs> this one, that, that one. Allah is unjust. And he have no dignity, and he have no uh, uh, like akhlaq, like uh, uh, what akhlaq in English? Um, I mean, when you say somebody is filthy, he have no. I mean, look at this. Yeah, this is a sheikh. Uh, so there is no proof that the Quran is from Allah. This is the name of the video. Uh, this video is called where is the justice of Allah and his messenger he get them busted no no he is not apostate no he is not apostate yeah he is not apostate أسخفوا آية في القرآن the most silly verses in the Quran <laughs> okay uh, uh, Muhammad, he did fool you with the with the miracles of the Quran. This is the name of the video. You see, I saw this video. Actually, I, I click on it before. I click on this video before. Yeah, but this is a long time ago. See, he posted a year ago. This is him, you see? This guy, he have an organization. Uh, uh, he called it Baytul Wujdan, you know? Uh, he's a sheikh, he have a lot of knowledge, very strong knowledge, you know. So, can the Muslims say he's, a, he's not a sheikh? They cannot. Let me see. قراءة اللي موجودة غلبة الروم والقراءة الأصح في نظري هي غلبة الروم قراءة معترف بها غلبة الروم يعني في زمن الإسكندر غلبة الروم وهم من بعد غلبهم سيغلبون He's showing you here a mistake in the Quran that when it says غلبة الروم it is not correct it should be غلبة الروم 
So like, you know, he show you um, obviously mistakes in the writing, mistakes in the reading, uh, stupid verses, uh, but yet he is a Muslim supposedly. And this is what making the Muslims go crazy, you know, because as you see, he's a sheikh and he have a huge audience. This guy is not just a small, like he's not a, a, anyone, he, he he's a big shot. So when he get all those audience watching his videos, I remember when I like the first time I click his video, I start clicking over his videos like, you know, click one second, two second, five, two minutes, just to see what this guy is talking about. Because I was surprised. I mean, who in the world who is this guy is, who is a sheikh, uh, but he is saying what he is saying. See? Look, look at the title here. It's impossible that the Quran is from Allah. It's impossible. This is the title. You believe it? And he make a speech about it and nobody dare to debate him. I mean, who? Okay, call him and debate him. Because he is very strong in knowledge. And his name is Ahmad. And he's a sheikh. No way the Quran can be from Allah. So the Quran from where? Look at this title here. Muhammad, he disrespect Allah, or let us say he misbehave with Allah. No, this guy is alive. He have lecturers, he go on TV, he have his own TV station. He have uh, 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 thousands and thousands of supporters, Muslim supporters, you know, and the, and, 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 and the, the Muslim, the, the atheists, they love him. Because this guy is, is, is making Muhammad Shish kebab in Arabic. How he look fake for you? How that can be? He's a very well known sheikh. It's not a joke. I mean, if this guy looks look fake for you, who look real? You are the expert now, right? You are the expert in fake and real. Look what he said. He just said, I mean, every single thing this guy he said is 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 is, is disaster for Islam. He said, Allah did not give Muhammad any knowledge because all the knowledge already is exist in the Torah and the Injil. Muhammad he got nothing. That's what he's saying. <laughs> ولهذا نبي واحد ما ذكر لنا القران غير ما موجود في القران في التوراه there is not even a single prophet he mentioned what is in the quran except what is in the quran nobody mentioned what is in the quran اذا كل من الله يذكر لنا شويه عن عن بوذا عن زرادوش عن if this is our coming from Allah, okay, what about you mentioned to us about Buddha, about Zaradasht, about him? <laughs> this guy is very natural too, you know? He's a philosopher, he's smart, intelligent, and he is hitting really hard. <laughs> mentioned to us what, uh, China, in Africa, I mean, oh, that's it? This is all what you know is about the Christian and the Jews? That's it? There's not even one black uh, prophet? <laughs> The black prophet <laughs> there's no black prophet in islam i mean who? <laughs> and those are names you know joseph and uh, Saleh and, and and jack jacob and, and those are the names he's repeating those are the stories exist in the torah and the injil so where is the new you see, he's not saying the pro he says the prophet he 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 have knowledge, you know. He's uh, like he he he, he which means he's he's educated, uh, but this is all from the previous books. 
Diamond can you go well? He's, he sat down with, with the bishops and the rabbis. He sat with Waraka ibn Nufal, you know, the priest, you know, the, the Nasara. And he was a believer. <laughs> you have a lot of beliefs. See, he's, a, he's a speaking as a Muslim. But this guy, yet he is considering himself as a Muslim, he is destroying Islam because he's being truthful. He never brought a story is not in the Torah and the Injil, which means he have nothing new. Okay, somebody is saying why is a Muslim? That's a good question. See what this guy he believed that the Quran they have today is a garbage. This is not the Quran from Allah. Muhammad, the story about Muhammad they have today cannot be the stories. So what he is saying to you or trying to say to you that Islam, is the, the existence of Islam today is a false Islam. All right. Why? Because he found that the, the Quran is stupid, full of mistakes and stupidity. Muhammad in the Quran is a bad person. So when he say Muhammad, he was doing bad. He is speaking about according to the stories we have, he's a bad person. According to the Quran we have, the Quran is horrible. According to the book we have, Allah is bad. You see, this is his logic. His, log his, his name is Ahmad Al-Qaba'iji. It's hard to say his name. Let me post uh, uh, the, in the chat his, his page. But it's in Arabic. I mean, what you will understand. There is no the true Quran. He says it not exist no more. That's it. You know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if you look at the comment here, you will not believe it. This man, he, uh, he, 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 uh, he overcome all the brainwash which every Muslim is exposed to since his childhood. Uh, intelligent with knowledge and his thinking as deep as the sea, as far as the sky. He is like, uh, a, 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 like a strong storm which is connected between the earth and the sky. So you see those Muslims, they are finding that this guy is getting Islam busted and he's saying the truth. Uh, this person he said what uh, all the, the you know what let me let me use Google translation give me a second so we can uh, use Google translation to translate give me a second hold on so you can see the comment you will not believe it and you know this is why we say when when when, when they say that uh, Islam is a uh, 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 increasing extent this time is dead I mean look what's happening here let us try let us translate use Google translation so you can see the comments and the comments alone is enough to tell you what's happening try again options English to English Arabic to English okay translate see this is the translation This person said what Islamic scholar and scholar have not have hiding through ages. Islam is the most dangerous religion in it for humanity. The messenger is the first to disagree with the verses and do visit. Uh, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, they're talking about like, a, a, you know, some verse in the Quran. Uh, Muhammad words are not from the Creator. This is what they are learning from him. You know, this is what this guy is saying to them. Uh, greeting. This is a creative. This is a creative sheikh, Ahmad Al Kaba Kabajani. is a wonderful thinker and creative re researcher. Quran offended the divine self in term in terms of heaven. Uh, 
I mean, look at this comment. Look at this. This is all Muslims. See? So nobody knows really how many Muslims this guy, he was able to make him leave Islam. Or at, uh, let's say in the best scenario, they, they became Muslims like him, which means they believe that Islam today is not the true Islam. You know, it's a false Islam. Yeah, you know, for me, I wish I can use his video, but, but uh, you know, I don't agree with him in anything he say, except, the, you know, the Quran is stupid, yeah. But he still, he is trying to say that, okay, the Quran is bad, is stupid, uh, Muhammad in the Quran is bad, Muhammad in the Hadith is bad, but this is not a true Muhammad. That's mean he's trying, they say, Muhammad is still is Muhammad. But we don't have the real Muhammad in our books. I just told you why he's a Muslim. He think that the true Islam is not this. The true Islam is something different. So he believed that the Quran is not from Allah. He believed the stories about Muhammad are false stories. Which means he believe everything we have about Islam is false. Which means Islam is false. But yet he says, I believe in Allah. He believed that Muhammad is a prophet, but this is not the Muhammad you're giving me in those stories. Because the books we have proving to us that Allah is bad, Muhammad is bad. No, no, Imam Tawhidi, he don't do that. Imam Tawhidi is a, is a, actually, Imam Tawhidi is a very dangerous person. He fool Christians and he fool atheists. He make them believe that he is, uh, uh, like he is uh, attacking bad things in Islam. But in fact, he is not attacking any bad thing in Islam. The fact he's deceiving you. He's trying to say to you that this is the teaching of the Muslim Sunni, that the Wahhabi, this is not the teaching of Allah. He never attack Allah. He never speak against Islam. We can't compare. Imam Tawheed is a joke. And the funny, he was able to, con to convince some Christians that this guy he is defending, is he's attacking Islam. The fact is not. He's, he's doing exactly the opposite. Uh, uh, look, this one have a uh, uh, because now we translated. So look at that the translation. Yeah. No, this is not what he is saying. He is not saying Muhammad he hijacked Islam. He is saying that. The Islam we have today is not the true Islam. As simple as that. How many times I need to repeat? He's saying that those who carry Islam, the books and they wrote the books, are liars. The Quran is not the Quran. So he's not speaking against Muhammad really. As much he is saying that the stories we have about Muhammad is not true. The Quran we have is not true. You get the point? Because this Quran is stupid. The Muhammad we have, we are, we are talking about, is a stupid Muhammad. This is going to be the true Muhammad. So he is, he is not attacking Muhammad as, as much as he is attacking the, the Quran we have, saying this is, cannot be from Allah. I mean, do I need to repeat myself one million times to explain it? What, what is difficult to understand? He is saying the Quran we have as a book today, this is not the real Quran. He is not attacking the Quran, he is attacking the Quran we have today, saying this is cannot be from God. This is stupid. Are you getting the point? So he is not saying the Quran is a false book. He's saying the Quran we have today is a false book. Muhammad we have today is a false prophet. But he believed that Muhammad is not a false prophet. But not this Muhammad they brought to us today, which we are, you know, we are talking about. Okay? And that would make him very effective between the Muslims. Because, okay, now you made the Muslims agree with you because he's saying the truth. And he's being very natural. And he is not denying, he's, he's still a Muslim, he's a sheikh. So he's saying, okay, well, the Quran today is garbage. This is going to be from God. Look at this verse, look at this verse, look at this verse. This is, this is, this is a joke, you know? And... And everybody have to agree with him. 
He showed them the mistakes in Arabic. He showed them the mistakes in history. He showed them the mistakes, etc. And he said, okay, this is going to be from God. This is not the Quran. So there is a Quran, which is not we have. We don't have. You don't know. <laughs> he don't know. <laughs> Look at this video here. Al-Mahzala fi Balagat al-Quran. The Muslim, they say that the Quran have an amazing language, right? He's saying this is a joke. The Arabic Quran is a joke. Al Mahzala fi Balagat al Quran. Imagine this is the name of the of the video. Maybe I should uh, should I play his video, one of his video, and translate for you guys so he can he can read with us and see. I mean, we can see how he's talking about. This guy is extremely dangerous actually for Islam because simply he's a sheikh, he have a strong knowledge, he's a smart, and he is very uh, like uh, he have a charisma between the Muslims. They like him, you know. The way he talk is very natural. Uh, he is not just a guy. You know, he is not a I mean a guy opening YouTube and talking about Islam. This guy he spent his life studying. But imagine a sheikh, he make a title like this, Al-Mahzala fi Balagat al-Quran. The silliness and the stupid thing about claiming that the Quran is a, is a strong language. Anyway, this is why actually for me, I do not really need to do videos in Arabic because those people are doing a great job. And there's a Christian, uh, you know, Middle Eastern Christians, Moroccan Christians making videos in Arabic and they are really humiliating the God of Islam, big deal. <clears throat> Again, guys, don't forget to play, please to subscribe to our uh, other channel because uh, take take a note from now on. We will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I don't care really how many people will be there. You like to join us, join us. You don't like, it's up to you. There we will take call from Christians. We will not debate about Islam. We will be in different mood, different topic. So don't forget to click at the link in the info uh, to subscribe. All right. Yeah, I wish his, uh, I wish he make videos in in English. That would be good too, because he's a sheikh, you know. And by the way, there's no Muslim sheikh de 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 there to debate him. Add add this to your note. Not a single sheikh there to debate him. Says to him, you're wrong. Prove him wrong. You don't dare. <laughs> and uh, and none none of them. He says, show, show us your face. <laughs> So he is his denial is okay. Look what happened. This guy he grew up all his life studying and from a religious family, big religious family. He became a sheikh. His father, I think, is a sheikh. So and then he came to the conclusion that this is going to be from God. So what he would do? Either he leave Islam, or he come with the idea that the Quran we have today obviously is false. The books of Hadith about Muhammad we have today is absolutely false. So, in order to save himself from going out, you know, and lose everything, he, you know, he adopted a new idea, which is Islam is good, but not, not this Islam. Quran is good, but not this Quran. Muhammad is good, but not this Muhammad. No, he's not making a new version of Islam because he doesn't have a new book. No, he's not. But he is just sharing that what we have today is, is, is stupid. But he doesn't have the, the good thing. You know what I mean? He doesn't have a Quran. 
he don't have a, like a replacement so he's not making his own Quran or making new Islam no he's just saying this is gonna be this is gonna be the true Islam so he don't present solution for it for it he present the problem and that make Muslims leave Islam at the end of the day no we can't say he is the other side of the coin of me uh, because uh, simply he is not attacking really Muhammad as much he's attacking what is written about Muhammad so he's saying this Muhammad is bad we can't be we can't be a prophet this Allah is bad this can't be Allah the one we worship this Quran is bad this is can't be the Quran of God can you tell me one example the good of Islam and Muhammad you see the good about somebody you know everybody even the devil even the devil he tried to present himself as a good person somehow you know <clears throat> when the devil come to Jesus The devil he play that he is a person trying to accept Jesus. If you are a son of God, you throw yourself from the top of the mountain. What was that about? It sounds like the devil he want Jesus to prove to him that he is God or he's son of God. Which sounded legitimate, like okay, you know, okay, if you are God, if you are Jesus, do this. If you are the Messiah, okay, do that. So the devil he present himself in a way to make you do something bad so in the beginning he is not challenging Jesus he is asking him can you do this if you are the Messiah in other way he is tempting you see we say the word that says Jesus was tempted tempted here is a is not a good translation actually it is trying the, the shaitan or Satan he tried to make Jesus do what he wanted him to do by playing what by playing nicely if you are the son of God jump from the top of the cliff see he's not pushing Jesus from the top of the cliff he's asking nicely and kindly so asking nicely and kindly it sound like good so this is the good Satan which mean the good Satan as image try to present himself as a good person but inside him the purpose is evil are you getting my point it's like somebody come to you and say okay uh, the Bible says uh, if even if you drink poison nothing can can affect you but the Bible is not talking about really drinking poison it's talking about uh, the poison of this earth, the poison of this, uh, all the poison in this earth cannot really kill us because the Bible says in different place, be aware, fear those who kill the spirit, the soul, uh, uh, not the body. And the Messiah himself died, killed. So how poison will not affect us? So he might sound like he is trying to say, okay, I want to believe in Christianity. If you drink poison, show me. But in fact, he's trying to see if you are naive, stupid, and he will do what he's asking you for, and he will kill you. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Actually, fear always those who they are kind, because those can harm you more. You know what I mean? Because they come to you nicely, they go inside your house, uh, they sniff the news, they learn about you, so later they can attack you better. You know, when, when a country, he send a spy against another country, what does spy do? Spy, you know, spy destroy. The spy can, a spy, he can make you lose the war. A country can destroy by a sneaky, very nice spy. my friend the Bible is not the Bible says it clearly that time will come 
and people will think by killing you they are doing favor to God correct so Jesus he predicted from the first day he spoke to his disciples that they will be killed so this is not about Paul or poison or he been bitten by 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 it doesn't matter all of them they get killed all of them they were slaughtered and they slaughter horribly so and remember the messiah himself got killed i mean who is more powerful than the messiah paul peter john no so if your lord himself was crucified then what are we talking about so if you if you want to take verses in the bible you have to to make it it's like this image in front of us imagine you decide to take the mountain and then suddenly you, and you took the lake and then you, you left the trees but, but there's no ground there's something missing in the picture right so don't take a verse and make a story out of it we have a book we don't have a verse Always when you, uh, like when the Muslim they quote for you says, Jesus says, uh, uh, Eli, Eli. Okay, well, Eli, Eli. So why Jesus is saying that? He's quoting the Old Testament. So if you take the verse without knowing what is written in the whole book, then you might be confused why he's saying that. Right? The U.S. government works for Talmud readers. You know, I'm, I am not a supporter of this uh, conspiracy thing. But for sure, there's evil people working in the government. And there's good people working in the government. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> All right. I think we have, you know... Okay, how many of you did not go and click at the link in the info yet? Please don't forget, because the, the coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you will not see me in this channel. I will be there. So if you like to join us, I will leave this video for people so they can watch it. Take a note. Click at the link in the info. It's down in the details of the video. And subscribe. Yeah, there's people, they enjoy conspiracy. Anything for them is conspiracy, you know. Uh, you see, uh, when you speak about government of USA and evil, you will find that there is no single government in the world is not practicing evil. So why only the government of USA? Which one? Which one is not practicing evil? All of them. All of them. You know? Uh, actually, they are they are competing about who want to do more evil. Like you know, I vote for Trump and I support Trump because he is better than the rest. But doesn't mean that oh, Trump is the best and he's good. But let's say he is the best between the evil one, maybe. What we can say? They are all ugly. So let us say, uh, at least this guy is allowing the Christians, uh, uh, Obama, he was fighting Christianity and Christians for eight years. This guy, maybe he is not really interested in Christianity, but he because he want to earn their support in the election. Okay, no problem. Give him what he want. He give us what we want. You know what I mean? Maybe he don't care for Christ. Maybe he is not a Christian. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But at least he, the Christians, they have their freedom. The Christians, you know, Obama was fighting Christianity to the point they stopped saying Merry Christmas. Like it's, it turned to be a happy holiday. You see, if the Democrats keep going in the in the agenda they have, in maybe 20, 20 30 years from now, they will make uh, uh, Christians... Uh, uh, discriminated as if they are living in the time of Rome in the old days no Christmas 
no you know nothing uh, the Bible they are fighting it they are taking crosses from the from mountains from hills from earth you know a Trump he came and then the Christians they got their freedom back so you can say whatever you want about the conspiracy in your head at the end of the day we judge the person by his fruit so Trump he have bad fruits he have good fruits but who of us don't have both in the same way it is anyone any it is any one of us here is an angel all of us, we have had better fruits. All of us. No exception. Even the one who think he is the best of us, he have better fruits. And the Bible confirmed that. For all commit sin. All are sinners. Right? So, we don't want to live by the conspiracy uh, propaganda anything happening around us is a, is a conspiracy uh, but yes it is possible there is conspiracy sometime uh, but you have to be smart and you have to be vigilant and you have to be uh, a believer do what is right at the end of the day What time I will be in the weekend? This is why we are saying subscribe, my friend, because as I do here, I will I will post a, a, a pre-time, I mean, if, at least a few hours before, uh, saying I will be there at that time. That's it. So subscribe to the other channel, and that's it. You will find out. And be sure that you turn your notification on. And don't forget to subscribe to Patreon, too, because in Patreon, I post, too, that I am going to be live, you know? If you subscribe in Patreon, you will be able to notify that I am going to be live. The word al Messiah, the meaning of Messiah, the last prophet, or possible come another man he claimed to be prophet. Does that mean the Messiah is the last prophet? I'm not sure what do you mean, Andy. You are talking about Islam or talking about Christianity? <clears throat> because Al Masih is an is a word exists in Christianity, exists in Islam. So I'm not sure what you mean. In Christianity, there is there is no uh, 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 there is nothing is called uh, the coming prophet. His name is the Messiah. Air Church Channel. What air church channel? I'm, I don't understand what people are saying. This is a, a other channel. We, we go live in it in Saturday, Friday, Sunday. So if you like to join us, subscribe there. I mean, why, why it's complicated? In the Friday, in Saturday, in Sunday, we will be in the channel, which is not this one, the one I'm posting the link for you in the chat. So subscribe, subscribe, so can you join? You can join us and be with us. Make a new account. Anyway. Subscribe to Facebook. I'm posting there. Minds.com We have many options. <clears throat> All right, any other question? All right. Well, I think we are we are done for today. I'm glad to spend a good time with you guys. It's getting late here for me. Uh, if I want to eat Middle Eastern food, which one you recommend? That's a good question. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Well, there's nothing is called Middle Eastern food. I don't know what you mean. There's every country have their own food. So Middle East is, is, uh, is you know, is a big mix. We cannot say is uh, all the same. So every country have their own food. Eat what is good for you. And food is food in the end of the day. All food is the same. It's a food. You die to eat it. When you eat it, you wish like why? I mean, what I ate? Nothing. <clears throat> People they spend too much time for food. Yeah, there is simple simple dishes. They are they are good and nice, like hummus, uh, a Greek salad. That's a very good dish. Healthy. Could have cheese and tomato and uh, parsley, mint, uh, lemon, olive. You know. Greek side is one of the best uh, dishes. What time you usually go to bed? I have no idea. Because I don't go to bed right away. I, I go to bed when I get so tired. And it takes me a really good time before I can get tired. If I go to bed, even if it's late, and I'm not tired, I will not be able to sleep. I will, I will destroy my rest of the night. So I better not to go to bed until I feel I'm so tired. Then I go to bed. Then I will sleep. Right? And thank God I'm single because if my wife is, if I'm married, she will be suffering. The poor woman, she will go to bed alone. And then the genie will come to her. <laughs> the genie in the ball. <coughs> yeah. Uh, you're welcome, princess. No, I sleep actually. I sleep good, you know, but uh, I don't. You see, I eat once a day. If I eat more, I will not be able to sleep. I I get hyper. I get I get to burn it, and then it's impossible to sleep. So I avoid eating more than once, and I eat. Uh, I try to eat earlier like not close to uh, lead time um, once every 24 hours which is good everyone is different you know some of you if you don't uh, eat twice you will get or three time or even maybe four time you get dizzy right I know people if they don't eat uh, uh, breakfast they get dizzy just breakfast for me, I hate, I hate to eat in the morning. I don't like it. Unless it's something like uh, there's an occasion or let's say a, a change. Like I'm, tra I'm traveling, uh, there's a lot of work to do, physical work, etc. It have to be something new. But uh, just uh, being home, not doing something physically uh, uh, hard and eat a breakfast, that's not a good idea for me. Always you have to maintain that you should not eat more than you do what you need. So if your body will not burn it, don't, don't eat. You see, people get sick. Why? Because they eat more than what their body need. And that would be extra. So anything extra is not good. It's extra. You do not need it. You have to give your body what it's your body needed. Same for sleep, food, drink. If you don't drink enough, it's not good. If you drink too much, it's not really right. Uh, too much salt will kill you. Too much sugar will kill you. You have to have a balance in your food, in your drink, in your sleep. Actually, you know, overweight is a, is a, is a, is a, I think it's the biggest reason for many people to die. Because when you, uh, when you are overweight, you will have many, a disease will come to your life, heart attack, uh, um, cholesterol, many things. But maybe it's not easy for people to control their desire, temptation. You open TV, you see commercial about food, hamburger, sandwiches, uh, snack, etc. So you find yourself automatically going to the refrigerator and grabbing something to eat 
you know people lose they lose control if you reach that point when you lose control about how when you should eat then you will be always in trouble you know when I go on the street walk there's some people you walk with them they want to eat ice cream they see ice cream they want to buy ice cream they see uh, uh, corn they want to buy corn uh, they see whatever anything they see in the street they want to buy because they cannot their, their their tongue run like like a puppy you know what I mean it's like a puppy when he see he smells something <laughs> that's it he wanna he wanna get it he cannot control himself that will make you suffer a lot for me even if I see a thousand dish of food and I'm walking the street I feel I have no desire and actually uh, like when I go overseas uh, I go home I cook at home most of the time I don't trust really restaurants you have no idea what those restaurants what they have what they who, the one who's cooking what he touched before he put uh, <laughs> God knows God knows what are you eating you know some restaurant they use the same oil the same oil for frying for the last six months actually I saw I saw a, a documentary in China they are using uh, oil from the sewage oil from the sewage using it in a restaurant to fry food from the sewage imagine not like bad oil from no no from the sewage you know so you don't know your restaurant what you know and uh, you just put your trust in the person who is how good he is how and all of those people they want to make money and you know for the sake of money people kill people rape people take off their clothes do porn uh, by money so you go to a restaurant you spend more money you don't know what are you eating and you might get corona and as it as a tip in the top of it just cook at home don't you have a home I prefer to fry an egg at home better than eating a restaurant I don't know what they are serving me I don't trust restaurant I don't like them I eat only there only if it is like let's say um, something will not get dirty you know, I mean like something barbecue uh, something special if it's like okay like a, a seafood I like seafood you know but uh, usually I, I avoid uh, I avoid restaurants I don't like them there is some places uh, you know the restaurant is supposedly super but even those places you cannot trust you never know cook by your hand the food will be tasty tasty you know uh, because it's your hand cook always you will like it fish is good yeah you know, where I am I'm saying I'm saying just uh, just restaurant is a problem restaurant is a problem and you know I was uh, I was uh, in the army at that time and there was an open buffet close from the army base it's like you have no place to go except this place so uh, you know they have an open buffet and that's why I like it and I eat a big meal and uh, you know in the Middle East we like bread like the torta bread you know I don't know what they call it uh, anyway like a Middle Eastern bread so they have something something similar not Middle Eastern but it's very close so one day in the table there's no bread and I wanted to check I want to ask the waiter I mean there's no waiter because it's open buffet so this they, they put the food in the table and you choose whatever you want to eat and you sit in the table and that's it so I shouted anybody here hello you know nobody came so I went in the direction of the kitchen and the more I get it close inside the walkway my feet start feeling they stuck you know from the dirt the floor is so sticky like if you are walking in a gum this is how dirty 
When I arrived to the kitchen, the kitchen is so ugly, disgusting. You will not believe it. I felt I want to throw up immediately. And then after that, each time I remember that that restaurant I eat there, I feel I like I feel the food when I come out from my, my, my mouth. I cannot believe it how filthy, dirty that restaurant is. Anyway, I reported them and they closed the restaurant. Uh, but imagine the restaurant outside is so beautiful. They have flowers. Everything is so clean. The dishes are so clean. I mean, you don't see anything. But when you go in the kitchen, oh boy, it is horrible. It is really horrible. And this is in America where there is like a lot of uh, control and etc. and blah, blah, you know. No, so you can imagine. Yeah, you know, eating at home is the best way. First, you save you save money. You don't, you, you know, do you know like if you think about it, how much money you spend if you eat outside. Most scenario, you will spend way more if you eat outside. Secondly, it's you. You know what you are cooking. You choose the food, if, uh, meat of your choice. Yeah, uh, it's clean by your choice. It's trustworthy. Yeah. Even chocolate, you know, you, you I don't know how you, how people they can trust eating those things because you never know what is feeling inside this chocolate, especially if those uh, uh, is made in some countries where there's no like in new machines where nothing can get in at night roaches cockroaches and insects they can jump in the chocolate and then what they do <laughs> they, they, they mix them together <laughs> so you will get the chocolate with the with the, a lot of a protein cockroach is a protein <clears throat> anyway i don't want to damage your appetite for a restaurant but for me i eat only in restaurants if i have to Unless is the restaurant is something special, like they have a crab, uh, a very f fancy shrimp. That's a different story. But uh, normally, I don't eat in restaurants. I don't like them. I don't trust them. All right. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I cook very good, actually. My cooking is very good. You know, once uh, I I, uh, I cooked for my mom and she said, OK, I know that you are very clean and the house is so clean, so I'm not going to ask you who cleaned the house, but who cooked this food? <laughs> so my mom, she think like I know somebody, uh, a woman, she came over, she cooked for me or something. She want to investigate, you know, who cooked this food for you? I said, Mom, it's me. She said, come on. I'm your mom. Remember? Huh? I am your mom. Who cooked this food? <laughs> I said, Mom, it's me. <laughs> yeah, because when I left her house, I know only how to eat in the best scenario. <laughs> I never cooked anything in the house, you know? So she know I know nothing about cooking. So she can't believe that this is my cooking. I said, okay, aren't you going to stay here for some time? I will show you. I will cook in front of you. But she was convinced that there's a woman she's cooking for me. There's no way that me, I am cooking this, you know? Yeah, and she want to know, it's okay, it's okay, you know, I know, okay, you know, what's her name? You know, I said, Mom, I don't have anyone. Okay, I don't know anyone, all right? She said, okay, it's okay, so, okay, okay, okay. So uh, why you don't introduce her to me? as Mom, I don't have anyone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, because you learn, you know, when you are staying in your parent house and you don't cook, you, you don't learn. But when you are, uh, you go overseas and you uh, you want to survive, but you will eat every day pizza. I remember first time I came to USA, the first six months I'm eating pizza. So I became a pizza guy. Pizza every day. Pizza, 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 pizza. What is your pizza? You know? Because I was, you know, I, I have no time. Uh, and 
there's a there, there's a pizza restaurant like a store about maybe uh, 50 foot away from my apartment so six months i'm eating pizza literally you know every day pizza every day pizza and then after that i hate to eat pizza because that's it i have enough of it and then i start learning how to cook you know and you learn <clears throat> are you from lebanese background i don't share anything about myself my friend <clears throat> Well, I'm not against pizza, but you eat a pizza, it's like eating eggs every day. You would have feather, they come in your skin later. So you start learning, you start cooking, and by time you became a chef. And actually men, they, they cook better than women. It's true. You know, and I really cook very good. Especially if I have time, but usually I like uh, you know I don't really care for food, so I do something fast, easy, you know. Like today I made the uh, spaghetti. <clears throat> spaghetti, very easy. Because I don't have really, I'm not in the mood to cook. It's very fast. It's very easy. Not a big deal. Uh, yeah, this is why there's so many male chefs, right? They teach very, they, you know, men, they are the best tailors. The, the women, they will be upset now. The best tailors, the best uh, fashion designers, the best cook. <laughs> no, no, actually, I do. I do a lot of uh, kind of food. I have, you know, I have very... Uh, I learned how to cook many, many kind of dishes. Very nice. You know, but my favorite dish really is anything have tomato. And I love salad. Greek salad. You know, I don't like salad, American salad. First time I ate salad in America, I, you know, like I, I, uh, I remember it was second day I arrived. And then it was, there is like in Middle Eastern occasion, like, uh, you know it's like a party wedding party something like this so the waiter came and asked me what do you like to eat so i look at the menu i don't know what is this i saw salad i said okay salad so then the guy he brought me a dish have tomato two pieces a, 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 a two branches of uh, what it's called uh, lotus I mean, what is the salad? What is this? This is a bunch of a grass in the dish. This is salad? I said, I said, where is the salad? This is the salad you have? He said, yes. American, they don't know what a salad is. They have no idea what is salad. It's like, it's like a, a, a summer grass. They put it for you in the dish and suppose this is salad. This is not salad. You know? If you want to know what a salad is, let me show you. <laughs> and the salad I make is the best. <clears throat> let us see. Yeah. Let us see if we can show you an example of what salad is. Yeah, American, they have no idea what... Uh... Actually, it's very weird, the salad they do. How even they can call that salad? I have no idea. There is no salad in the salad. <clears throat> Okay, we'll give you an example, but this is not really necessarily, this is not the dish I uh, I will make, but it's close, you know, for us, you know, we don't, I don't make the, the leaves are big because this is good for a goat, you know, we make it smaller, so it doesn't stuck in your throat. You see, when you make the leaf like this big, it might stuck in your throat, so you have to make it smaller, and the tomato have to be smaller too, 
Uh, I mean, everything has to be smaller, and then you have to add, uh, add olive oil, uh, lemon, uh, you can add some spice. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, but I'm just showing you. I mean, it, it's a close to salad, but this is not really the salad we do. Yeah. No, this is not even Greek salad. It's not really. Greek salad is, is, is way better than this. Yeah. But anyway, we do it I do it really, really good. And I, I, there's no way in America you will find a dish of salad. Salad in America is like this. Let us, let us, let us look for the pictures. Let me see. Very funny salad. It's like serving something for a goat, you know. Like you have a you have a goat, you know. I'm trying to find your American salad. Well, here we go. This is American salad. Look at this. I mean, how in the world this has became a salad? What is this? What is this? Do you think I'm a goat? Meh. What is this? You cut some leaves, you put them in the dish, you, you cut a small tomato, you cut it to pieces, and you put it for me in the front of me in the dish, and this is salad? This is not salad. <laughs> You see, mix it with olive oil. That will make it so good. Olive oil is very important, very healthy. Olive oil, not stupid fake oil. Olive extra virgin oil, lemon, onion, mint, uh, uh, parsley. Uh, especially if the mint, if you have two kinds of mint, there's the dry mint and the fresh mint. If you have them both, that will be perfect. Why? Because the fresh mint will give it the smell. The dry mint will give it the taste, which is very good. You know? Shrimp and crabs are not kosher. No, with the Christ, everything is kosher, my friend. It's not what go inside the mouth make you dirty. It's what go from your mouth. So you are going by the Old Testament. This was made for the Jews to preserve them from illness and disease. You have wrong idea. Anyway, yeah, uh, olive oil is very good, very healthy. It increases your. Uh, uh, it's, you stay young, actually, if you if you always take olive oil. It's good for skin, good for the brain, good for vision. Um, it's good for many things. Yeah, but this is, you see, this is not. Let me see if I can find you a dish crows to. <clears throat> All right. That will be close to our dishes we are talking about. Let us see. Um, where, 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 where? Ah, I found you. I found you a dish which is the Lebanese dish. It's called tabule. This dish is very delicious too. Very, very delicious. You can watch videos on YouTube, learn how to do it. It's very, very tasty. <clears throat> This is a salad. This is the salad I do. You see how it is? It's a very good mix of everything, and especially the olive oil. You put a lot of olive oil in it. 
ponion, uh, many many things, you know. And especially if you add a cucumber, it give it, it give it a good smell and good taste too. Yeah, this is a salad, not the American salad. You know, that's what I'm talking about. So American salad have nothing to do with food. What do you think about vegan? I don't know what vegan means, Sophia. <clears throat> yeah, grape leaves, you know, they use, they eat it with the, in the Middle East, they eat it with the, like the bully, the bully, you know? So uh, it is, it's, they use it like a bread for the this uh, kind of dish. So they bring the, uh, the small young leaves of the grape, not the big ones, because those are easy to eat. They are baby, baby leaves. And they use them as a bread to eat with it. Actually, there is only like uh, uh, two countries they don't know how to cook any kind of food, America and England. The rest of Europe, they have better food. Like France, they have a very good, you know, I mean, they are way better. Uh, it Italian, you know, Tony, you know, they have the best uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, mix of food when it's come to bread. Anything have to be with bread. The Italian beat everybody. Uh, but American food, American, they only the only thing they knew is to do barbecue. That's it. America is barbecue country. Everything is barbecue. Sausages is barbecue. Steak is everything. Anything is barbecue. They don't eat really vegetables. That's why you see in America there's a lot of uh, health issues because their food focus in meat. <clears throat> I have I have a I have a neighbor you know he complain he hardly he can breathe hardly he can walk hardly he can talk he hardly he can sit but the only thing is easy for him is to eat you know three pounds of a steak in a lunch this is the only thing is easy for him the rest is very hard <laughs> I have to get home because I'm. I cannot talk to you long. Really, I have to get inside because I'm really tired. You cannot talk to me for two minutes standing. You know, it's so big. It's like maybe five hundred pounds in the size of a car. But he have time. You know, he can stand next to the barbecue. You know, he's standing next to the barbecue as if he is really Superman. You know, but the second the food is done, he eat. That's it. He's gone. His history. He's sitting the lazy boy. He can't move anymore. Yeah, welcome to America. <laughs> yeah, well, most of Americans, they don't eat really vegetables. They eat, they, they concentrate in meat. You know, most of Americans, maybe like, in, maybe now they are focusing in, you see, look at this dish here, you see. Here, there's a problem with this dish. Even it's look nice, but they are making the pieces very big. This is very big. You should not make it that big. You should make it smaller. Yeah, I like this. Maybe smaller too. But people they get lazy, so they make it big because this is faster to finish the dish, make it ready. But the smaller will make a better mix and uh, easy to swallow and to digest. <clears throat> but those kind of dishes not only healthy, they make you relax and you sleep easy. Very healthy food. You know, I encourage actually each one of you, if you can make an additional salad every day, beside whatever food you eat. For me, I I love to eat it as it is, salad as it is. You know, I don't mind to eat salad for, uh, but you know, but in 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 USA, uh, I mean the food is limited. You go to the different country, you go to Asia, you have a lot of kind of vegetables, a lot of things. You know, we don't have the same as they do have there. And you can add a shrimp if you want. You can add cheese. You can add uh, many things, which means you can, you know, so it does not going to be boring for you. You can add a change every day for it. Actually, there's a dish I like too, which is, let me show you. This is very healthy too. 
I, I told you I make yogurt at home, right? So I make my own yogurt. <coughs> this is very easy dish. Anyone can make. Doesn't take time. Uh, it is yogurt and cucumber and garlic and some salt and that's it. fantastic dish especially if you do it and you leave it for the second day don't eat it right away you know don't eat it right away leave it for the second day and you will see how tasty because uh, you know by the by the by the second day the the, the taste of the uh, cucumber uh, will be uh, I mean the smell the taste will be all over and the garlic too and for sure use a fresh garlic um, and then the, the yogurt will taste so good this is a very healthy dish I love it <clears throat> maybe we should make uh, some videos about uh, those dishes how to make them right yeah I mean it's uh, it's fantastic dishes it's very easy you know just bring uh, garlic cut the cucumber you know two pieces three pieces of garlic depend how lo how much you like garlic salt mix it together put it in the fridge for tomorrow don't eat it right away i advise you to leave it for tomorrow yeah plain greek yogurt don't use the fat free stupid i mean how in the world people they eat those things fat free i mean fat free what about you eat uh, food free fat free they took all the benefit from it so you're eating nothing yeah, it's just yogurt. Cut the uh, uh, the cucumber. Some mint. Mint will give it very nice taste too and smell. Uh, garlic, salt. Mix it. Cover it. Put it in the fridge. Eat it tomorrow. Very very nice. And I never buy gar uh, I never buy yogurt from the store. I always make my own yogurt. <clears throat> Yeah, you see, all those dishes are very, very uh, nice and very easy to do. And like I do hummus at home too. Hummus is very easy to do. You do not need to be a master of cooking. Very, very easy to do. And it's very tasty. I add uh, hummus with a tahini. You know tahini? Tahini and lemon. It tastes so good. All of this is very delicious, nice, healthy, you know. For sure, you add olive oil to it. And I have another dish I make my own too. After I make yogurt, I put the yogurt in a in a like you know in a fabric, you know like it's like a you know case made from fabric, and you hang it in the top of the let us say sink or in the top of a filter, and then the yogurt is going to drop a lot of water from it. And that will make it thick. That thick yogurt is going to be extremely tasty. You put it in a dish. You put some olive oil in the top, uh, in the top of it, and mint. And man, will be so good. Especially if you drink next to it some tea. Try it. <clears throat> Yeah, they call it lebna. Yeah, lebna. This is the the core of the yogurt, which means it's just like kind of a, a little bit of dry yogurt. Not a dry, really dry, but it's mean you you took a lot of the water from the yogurt. Very tasty. <coughs> no, le lebna is like this. Let me show you. Hold on. It's very easy to make too. Here we go. This is the dish I'm talking about, which is nothing but yogurt. You dry the water from it, and that will make it more more uh, uh, thick. You know. See how it is. Very tasty. <clears throat> I 
and you put olive oil in the middle that will be very yummy and mint my future wife <laughs> why this word is following me you know today I, I i spoke to my mother and the first question when you are going to get married Hmm. Second question. Oh, it's uh, like the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. The first fifteen minutes is about me when I'm going to get married. Uh, this is my mom talking to me, you know. Then after that, it's okay, mom. Anything else? That's it. <laughs> Each time I talk to her, the same questions. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish you will change the way the the, the 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 at least the form of the questions. Like they are the same exactly. They come in order. You know, when you are going to get married, mom? I did not. Okay, if I find somebody, don't you want to have kids? Hey, mom, okay, I have to get married first to get kids. Okay, so why don't get married? Okay, mom, I told you if I find somebody, I will get married. <laughs> Your friends already, 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 they are married. They know, mom, that's it. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, you know. And second time she called the same questions. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Middle Eastern lady, you know what you can say. See, this is the art of like when you do food and you make it by your own. You can make some art and make it more, more uh, attractive, you know, for people. Uh, for me, I like to add some uh, hot spice in the top too, you know. And if you have Kalamata olive, that would be fantastic. Kalamata is one of the best olive ever. Greek olive. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You don't have way to wait a revelation to have someone <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean <laughs> when I'm going to meet anyone I speak in the computer I talk in the computer I'm not meeting people around me I don't share my name I don't trust anybody you know? <laughs> so how in the world do you want to meet anyone <laughs> you know what I mean <clears throat> it's like mission impossible Um, yeah anyway i mean uh, uh making your own food make you first feel better about what you do you enjoy enjoy it more it will be tasty because it's your own made and healthy because you know what you did and you will not feed something feed yourself something bad you know and actually, the, the, the salad is one of the most important dish. I advise all of you to eat it because it can really do a lot of uh, good things to your body. And every country actually they have their own way of making salad so you can make it in your own way whatever you like <coughs> she has to love ugly to meet CP yeah right John yeah mm. You know the, the the look of a human being is not really the most important maybe first first time you meet a person you will be uh, like the look for most of i don't know like uh, most of people they think about the look too much right but the look at after some time will disappear which means you will not even see it let us say you met a woman she is so beautiful first time like wow she is so really good you know she looked good or or you know you are a girl you look, you met a man 
But then after you start talking to this person, knowing each other, the look will disappear and the person will appear. So if the look does not match with what you like, then the look will look ugly. And it can be the opposite. A person who don't look good, but you, you know, when you, when you start knowing this person, you like a lot what this person is about, then the, the bad look, which you think it's uh, supposed to, it's not, he, he don't look good, you know what I mean? Then that would disappear. So either way is going to happen. Either you will like this person more and then you will forget about how he look, regardless if he's good looking or not good looking. Or the opposite. Right? <clears throat> Are you really ugly? I'm not sure really, but I get scared when I see myself, you know. I don't know, maybe if you see me, you don't see me ugly, I don't know. I'm qualified to be Prophet Muhammad. This is how bad it is. Right? <clears throat> No, you see, people, they have a wrong understanding of love. Love is not about, you see, if you love a person, you should love his brain first and his equality. Otherwise, anything else is not a love. There's, there's things in the human being. You know, human being, mostly, most of people, they are immature. So they see a person, they say to him, we love you. I'm crazy about you. But you will notice that this love will not live for long. You know, it's just temporarily. It's just a kind of, uh, let us say, a mood. You know, in a certain moment, he wanna he wanna have. Some people they uh, they have they have the intention to own things, and owning the desire of owning, they call it love. So they die to get what they love to have, but after they have it, they throw it away. They're kids. That is not love. That's, those are kids. And that's why we see a lot of divorce happen and people, they are unhappy in their marriage, etc. There is people who are mature, mature. They love the quality, which is going to be better and better by time. Because quality, you see, is the same as a, as, a, as a tough concrete. The more you, you know, you sand it, the more smooth it will be. So time will make it more nicer. So if you love a quality of a person, the quality, and the quality is real, the quality will never change to bad, is going to be good, and even better in the future. That will, that is, if you love that such a quality, that is a true love. The rest is just a desire. Desire of a woman, she is a beautiful desire of a man, maybe you, you are a woman, you like how he look like. Uh, some women they are interested of a man. He's tall. The second you say he's tall, he's there. They are interested. Uh, some women they like men who they have muscles. I mean, the women they have their own interest, the same as men. But all of this is garbage. That will not live for long. <clears throat> right? People they have interest. Of a look, not quality. Beauty in the eye of the beholder. You, you see, this is true. A beauty in the eye of the beholder, but this is can be temporarily beauty too. I mean, let us say a woman she like you, so she see you good looking even if you are not. But that later can she you know she can switch. <laughs> the same eye can see you ugly again, you know, <laughs> because. The moment she saw you good looking, she is under influence of something. It was not real. So if that influence go, reality will come. And then she will see you a bad looking again. This is why it's very important. If you love the person for the quality, not for a look, not for description. For everything change except that one. You see, you grow old, you get, uh, you you lose your 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 look, 
you have wrinkles etc but there is something never grow old that's that's your wisdom quality the rest will go <laughs> but most of people they they always live by the look you know they eat a dish because it looks good not because it tastes good as simple as that Do you believe in soulmate? Yeah, I don't know what does that mean. Soulmate is something you make. You see, because you shape yourself. If you don't shape yourself, that's mean you are being shaped by somebody else. So your soul or your yourself, uh, you are a person who come to an to a time where you, you think are mature you want to get married right so you start describing in your head uh, or let us say building description of the person you want to have to be your lifetime partner so that description when you start building it in your head that you are making your soulmate in the way you want so now in the future anyone come and he match this description in your head you think this is your soulmate but the fact it's you who shaped that soulmate is not he's not exist it is you who pre-decide in your head how he will be so if you could not get the same exactly you might compromise of some things in your list ah okay he is not uh, etc but he have this and this and that okay that's it so soulmate is something you create it's not real No, soulmate, she mean somebody he is made for you. No. Because at the end of the day, it's you making a choice. And most of people, they, uh, they have a pre, uh, pre-decision about who is going to be. There's, there's some women, they want to marry a rich man. That's it. And this is her soulmate. She think her happiness is having a rich man actually one of the things funny things about some ladies uh, they say to you you know there is a you know I, do you know how many men they uh, they ask for my hand okay why you are telling me this <laughs> and do you know how many rich men they ask for my hand okay I'm poor you know why you are telling me this this is one of the things that women they do usually and they make men run away if there is many men they are asking for your hand so why you are okay go what why you are telling somebody is you know you have to be smart you have to ask yourself before you open your mouth why you are saying those words if you think that will attract a man to you no he will run away if you want to tell him that's a famous person he uh, he want to marry you and you he said no you just made him run because now even if you think he wanna ask for you <laughs> they <laughs> You know, he will say, okay, well, that guy is rich. And she said, no, I am poor. <laughs> so he will run. So instead of making something good happen, you made him run. Don't be stupid. Shut up. <clears throat> Can you explain Quran? My friend, forget about Quran. Look at this salad. This is one million times better than the Quran. Forget about the stupid Quran for now. Well, you know, I, I, you know, life bring bring good and bad, and sometimes, uh, you, you know, you are a person limited in what you can have. Let us say opportunity. You know, let us say you are a woman who work in in a place have thousand of people, so you have more opportunity to meet someone maybe better than a woman. She live at home. She don't go out. She work ho at home, so she will meet who. So you see, life sometimes is not fair. And when you are a woman who don't have opportunity and choices, then choices are very limited if they are actually exist. You know what I mean?
Women, they have too much attitude. Well, they will live alone. They will die alone. If the one who have attitude, he will go alone. When a person, he have, you know, if you are not easygoing, smart, intellect, you know, uh, uh, down to earth, you are the only loser. You will lose. Yeah, and absolutely life is not fair you know you see you will see somebody <clears throat> she's very very wonderful woman but she she have no opportunity to meet anyone how she will meet a good man you know so she ain't marrying anyone who asks for her hand because nobody is asking anyway <clears throat> have you ever think about having children yeah maybe seven eight ten not more yeah, twelve maybe 15 maximum uh, let's say 21 uh, if she wants we can make them 24 28 maybe but not more than 30 31 32 and the best scenario maybe 40. <coughs> angry old soul no i'm not angry and what old soul actually i'm i'm, I'm very uh, I'm very happy with myself thank god and uh, if i want to get married i can uh, get married in in a week or two you see in the middle east it's very easy for a man to find the women to marry extremely especially if you have degree and you are from a family which is known it's very easy you will find a guy he is 70 years old marrying 18 years old the only one who suffer from finding a spouse in the Middle East or Middle Eastern is women, not the men. Everybody know that. <clears throat> so that's not uh, true. I would rather to live alone the rest of my life than marry someone and not happy. Yui Hayamawari. Okay, here we. Yeah, the purpose of, you know, uh, if you cannot be happy, I mean, what's the point of anything, right? <clears throat> How old I am? I'm very old. Actually, my mom, she don't remember when she gave birth to me. She said to me, between 18, uh, uh, 20, and... Uh, maybe 2020 so like there's a 100 hour, uh, year missing in the calendar of my mom you know she don't remember <clears throat> why you don't show us from your family how many women want to marry you i don't like to marry from relatives that's not right never marry a relative Maybe 69, not 70, exactly. Forty-three. Rachel, she come with number. Forty-two. Is that an auction? <laughs> Thirty. The auction should go, should go up, not down. 48, 50. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. My right, friend, age is not, is not what concern. It's how healthy you are. Healthy in the brain. So, if if about age i'm really old since i was really really young i mean since i was really 16 17 i was really old already very old i always find myself strange between people of my age this is why i don't like to associate with them i use always to like to sit with older people All right Yeah, actually, I need to sleep. I can feel it now. You see, I told you, when I feel tired, I sleep. That's it. 
if I try to go to sleep before it's time. So again, please don't forget to subscribe to this uh, the other channel. Again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we will be live in the other channel. <clears throat> I'm born 22 after Hijra. <laughs> Uh, okay, <clears throat> I'm 25 years old. <clears throat> you know, actually, I don't like to go back on age. You see, people who they are scared of their age, they never enjoy their life. Uh, for me, the important is, am I today is better than yesterday? And that is the good question. If yes, I enjoy my age. If not, I wish to go back. All right? But you can go back anyway. But if you are today better than yesterday, then enjoy today. And uh, the best thing you can do is examine what was yesterday was and compare it with today. And if it's today is not good, you have to work in it so you can make tomorrow better. Otherwise, all of us we will get old and age should be uh, kind of a treasure imagine you live forever I mean this is disgusting for me actually and maybe some of you will not like what I will say for me uh, like when we talk about death uh, I found that death is very interesting and very very satisfying because a human being if he a person who live forever or he have an idea he is living forever he will be very evil. You see, like maybe next we go next time we go in the quality of life, we talk about this. Uh, we saw what happened with coronavirus. Just a little tiny virus showed the whole world how weak a human being is and how easy to collapse. Twenty-four hours, three days maximum, you are dead. And then all the medicine in the world is exist. It's found to be zero cannot help you so imagine if a human being he live and he live forever how evil he will be imagine if a human being is like zombie you shoot him he come back to life immediately nothing can kill him so death is a mercy for a human being and that what I think about death death getting old you 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 went in a trip you did what you need to do uh, you are satisfied with it uh, you work in a mission which, which you believe in all the way to the end and then death is a place of comfort not a place of nowhere so for us as a believer we should not think about aging should not think and worry about uh, dying for this is just a stage for better life uh, in the same time as I said regardless if you believe or not it's good for the benefit of mankind that we die otherwise a human being is a beast very bad beast you know he conquer everything around him he have no mercy death is the only thing is holding the leech in the neck of a human being from being a beast nobody can control this is why i say death was a very good solution Imagine if we have all the billions before us that did not die yet. I mean, <laughs> we will be like zombie now, eating, eating each other literally. So death is mercy. Death is a mercy. Give the chance for you to live and someone else to live too. And then the time of that person go, another person will come. So it's a very nice, merciful way to share life. Uh, and, uh, you know, I remember there is a story about a monk uh, he was dying so they brought a doctor for him and the doctor he went inside and he checked him out and then he came out he says look your look your brother the monk is he lost his mind they said to him why he said well I, I told him you have a few hours to live he gave me a big smile he did not say anything he's so happy I said okay why you don't go and ask him why he's so happy I said, okay, well, it's interesting. So he went inside and he asked him, why you are, I told you you would die, well, you sound very happy. He said, I am a monk all my life, waiting for this moment to meet my Lord. So you see, the, the point of death is depend how you think about it, 
and what you consider it. If you are a true believer, it's a moment of meeting the Lord, uh, the one you love, he loves you. If you are not a believer, it's a point you fear and you are terrified because of it. Right? So, explain the word you saluna or you salli. You saluna is a group. You salli, a group, they are praying. And you salli is a person praying. Um. All right. Okay. I'm not going to repeat again. Don't forget to subscribe. The link is there. Click on it. Subscribe. We will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we will take call and people, they can. We will have a nice conversation. We will have a good time every week. We as a Christians, we can talk about everything. We can open any topic. People, they can call. And uh, we will talk, you know, I mean, as a family, as a friends. And you don't have to agree with me anything. I don't have to agree with you. But we can share the good for the sake of our good God. All right. So thank you very much for uh, for being here, guys. Uh, don't forget to make the salad I, I told you to do. It's very tasty and very delicious. All right. It's good for your kids, good for your health. And the more green you eat, the more flourish you will look. And don't forget the olive oil. It's mentioned in the Bible for a reason. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.